morning, everyone. And welcome to Insights 2017, our largest global conference ever. And how appropriate that we host it in what is known to be the largest non-gaming facility in the world. What do you think of this place? It's pretty fascinating, isn't it? So how many of you actually got lost on your way here, where you thought you were going to Delta, you end up in Cascades? It's my third time here, but each time, I, every time I leave my room, I have to stop and look around to make sure. And somehow, I always end up in the Cascades lobby. So if you ever get lost at night, here's a trick. Rumor has it that if you break out into a song, you sing Heartbreak Hotel, Elvis shows up and he shows you the way. I know Kathy, Elvis is from Memphis, but the actual song was recorded over here, so some trivia for you. So growth is the theme of the conference. You heard Joe say that our mission is to help you grow. Notice what we said. Our mission is to help you grow, to help you chart your chart for success. And that's our focus. In fact, when we look at our customers, what we see is individuals from companies, from sectors, from industries that are unique, who have very different challenges, different aspirations, different ambitions, and are willing to take different levels of risk. We understand at Epicor that the difference between being in the business of industrial machinery is very different from, say, rubber and plastics. And this is a point that I know our, competi our competition often doesn't understand. A distributor of electrical components, we understand in the product, needs something different than a distributor of, say, HVAC, or even consumer hard goods. We all see you as a universe of one, boldly different and deliberately unique. So underpinning our strategy are two things, growth and industry. So when you think of Epicor, think of a company that is fixated on the growth of our customers, growth in your revenue, growth in your profitability, growth in your operations. So if you're looking for a vendor that genuinely cares about how you grow, and in many cases, we being compensated by your growth, then you're at the right place. And the second is industry. As I mentioned earlier, understanding the nuances of our industry is extremely critical for, here, for us here at Epicor, and that's also how we differentiate in this market. So do you want a solution that is specific to your industry? Then again, you've picked the right vendor. And here is how we realize our growth. Here are some of the pillars, and I'll be spending a lot of time on stage here discussing these, that we build this growth around. Leveraging the cloud, global expansion, customer experiences, analytics and intelligence, and then building an, a vibrant ecosystem that Joe just touched on. But at the end of the day, we are about growth and we are about industry. So here is what we bring to the table. Industry design, industry expertise, and industry success. Design, expertise, and success. That's our products, our people, and our customers. What you will see here today, and you've already seen this probably over the last several months, is a complete transformation and reimagination of the design of our products. The markets are changing, expectations are changing, and our products are changing with that. And behind that are our people, my colleagues at Epicor, who have years and years and sometimes decades and decades of experience that then they in turn pour into designing these products. But at the end of the day, our success is tied, tied to your success. And we want to make sure that you have exceeded your objectives using our products. You have accelerated your return on investment. You in turn have launched new products and services and grown your business. Your testimony, your advocacy, means a lot to us. Your quotes make a huge difference. Here's an example of some of them. So we've, we've been, we have a voice of customer survey, and we're reaching out to thousands and thousands of customers and collecting all this data. So we heard from John, who said the product like Epicor Eclipse allowed him to stay ahead of his competition. We heard from Dave that 
increase efficiency, productivity, and accuracy is what he strives for and believes our products deliver that. On Profit 21, Dan says, streamlining operations and differentiating from your competitors is what Profit 21 allows you to do. In a recent survey that we did, which was a quantitative survey, 79% of Epicor ERP customers said that ERP E10 outperforms its competition, and 93% said that we scale better than competition. Please keep this feedback coming, both here at Insights and beyond, positive and negative. We are listening, and believe it, we are changing this company, and Joe just touched on that, based upon your feedback. So when you think of industry, you think of your industry, your future. What a great opportunity here today at Insights for you, and look at the, the tags on your badges indicate the product lines that you support. Opportunity for you to reach out, meet others from your industry, understand their challenges, understand the risks in their business, and how they're solving it. But a bigger point, and a point of caution, is don't get too myopic, don't get too insular. We believe the world's going through a major disruption. We believe industries are starting to converge. We hear more and more of distributors now getting into light manufacturing. We hear about manufacturers getting into services or refurbishing business. And this is your opportunity again to reach out to customers who are not like you and understand the opportunities and look at some of our products that we bring in as add-ons to solve that. So resist the temptation to run with just your own pack. So most of you are on your second or third or maybe even fourth ERP implementation. And the reason you picked Epicor or are considering picking Epicor is maybe some of those solutions didn't solve your exact problems in your industry. Maybe they were expecting you to re-engineer your business too much instead of adapting, having the product adapt to your business. So helping you run your business better, managing the movement of money, giving you faster access to information is what being industry-focused means. Here are some of the sectors that are the most meaningful to us. Manufacturing, distribution, retail, services. And notice I call these sectors, because I chuckle when sometimes our, com our competitors call these verticals. In fact, under these sectors are industries which are even more meaningful for you, such as aerospace and defense, food and beverage, heating and air conditioning, as an example. So what our people do, what our product managers and product marketing people do, is they have the ability to take an industry, click into it, and solve the specific needs of that industry. For example, in electronics, the need for multi-level uh, tracking, the need for document control, the need to manage RMA, the need to be compliant with some of the local regs, is extremely important to you, and that's completely different from if you're in the rubber and plastics business, where tool and die management and things like lean production become important. So having worked in this ERP space, believe it or not, for 28 years, I can tell you, and I've worked across several vendors, people outside of Epicor don't think this way about the sector. And being a true industry-focused company goes beyond just products. As Joe mentioned, it's about our support, it's about training, it's about implementations. When we decide to target a sector, we go all in. Take an example of Eclipse, a leader in the electric, plumbing, and HVAC space. And we understood when we looked at this that while we were solving the needs of existing customers with features and functionality, and there's a lot more, of course, that we need to do, the world was changing, and there was a need, there was a greater need for your salespeople to be mobile, whether you're at a trade show or you're at, in your own showroom. So we launched Eclipse Mobile Showroom, and I'll click through some of the screens, which then allow your salespeople to easily take orders to showcase products. Customers tell us it has allowed you to reduce sales, retrieve item substitutions, upsell opportunities. And this is just one example of when we go all into an industry, we realize it's going to go beyond just providing feature and functionality. Next, next, let's talk about the cloud. So this must be some kind of a record where a CTO has been on stage for now, what, eight minutes, and hasn't talked about the cloud yet. Of course we love the cloud. 
But the reason we deliberately don't start with the cloud conversation is our mission is to help you grow. And I know cloud sometimes become a, becomes a bit of a religion. There are believers and non-believers. We are completely embracing the cloud. In fact, I believe cloud will be a de facto standard for even enterprise applications. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. But our opportunity and our challenge is while we are, of course, looking to attract the next net new customer into the cloud, we have the responsibility to 20,000 customers that we have to move forward with us in this cloud. So speaking of cloud, we offer the various levels of tenancy that you may have seen. We obviously have single tenant applications. These are applications where basically we are hosting your servers and doing managed services on your behalf. A little more expensive, but you get full control of your environment from what you can do with it, from the cadence, from how often you want releases. And we also offer multi-tenant cloud, which again, the analogy for the uninitiated, which I know is very few of you now, is a single tenant cloud is like having your own home. Multi-tenant cloud is like being in an apartment where you get common services, but then you have the benefit of a reduced cost and faster implementations. But then again, when we talk to our customers, what you told us is you want the power, you want the cost savings of multi-tenancy, but you also wanted the control of single tenancy. So what I'm delighted to introduce here and offer you is something called dedicated tenancy. And you'll hear a lot more at the conference on dedicated tenancy. Dedicated tenancy, simply put, is the ability for you to enjoy the same cost benefits that you get from a multi-tenant environment, but having some control, obviously not the same amount of control that you had on-premises, but some control. I think we are starting with a 90-day window of release update cadences of ability to do customizations and configurations. And I think this is going to be a game changer. So you can learn more about dedicated tenancy at this conference and make sure you stop by and ask us if dedicated tenancy is right for you. So in fact, all the product demonstrations, and you're going to see quite a few of them here on stage, are going to be in the cloud. But we understand that cloud means much more than tenancy. And again, sometimes I grin when I hear competitors making such a big deal about, you know, are you single tenant, multi-tenant, et cetera. We get that. But it goes beyond that. It's about security, resiliency, disaster recovery, configurations, customizations. And that's why we offer you choice. We have our own data centers that Joe talked about. We support our cloud instance on Amazon Web Services, and we also support Microsoft Azure. So across the world, on an increasing basis, on a growing footprint, we are um, moving into areas and regions with multiple data center uh, strategies through some of our partners over there. Cloud is not the goal. It's one way for you to achieve your goals. And that's, at the end of the day, what our brand stands for. Grow business, not software. Now let's talk about global. And in that context, let's zoom out from the corner of your business into space and take a look at what's happening in the world of global. You heard of the butterfly effect, right? Where a butterfly flaps its wings in um, Tokyo and you get a tornado in Kansas. That analogy couldn't be more real today in the world of business and the impact that globalization is having on all of us. A significant precondition for globalization is affordable and quicker access to resources. Reliance on global resources also includes significant risks that we all have to now take in expanding our businesses beyond um, our, our specific borders. Whether it's a volcano in Iceland, it's a tsunami in Thailand, could be a nuclear meltdown in Japan, or even elections in France, they have a greater impact on our economy in the US and other economies around the world than ever before. In fact, I will say we live in a moment of history that is so fast-paced that you see the present only when it melts into the past and all of a sudden you're staring at the future. An analyst called this digital globalization. So that brings us to a product. So what are we doing about this? Our world is going through unprecedented disruption. We have teams that are spread across several countries along the world, and we are noticing a significant change in the pace of legislation 
that now it's our responsibility to make sure we take care of it in our products. The pace of this change has never been higher, whether it's expansion of new electronic reporting, proliferation of um, electronic invoicing, indirect tax regimes, etc. The introduction of electronic invoicing alone, just between 2015 and 2017, impacted 14 million companies in just Europe. Whether it was the Brexit move, or it was um, the introduction of VAT in the Gulf countries, or the introduction of GST in India, it creates a whole lot of uncertainty in your business, and the reliance on the products becomes even more critical. Both Epicor and iScala now feature powerful electronic compliance engines allowing for fiscal compliance. Now let's take a look. So whether you're a small business in Main Street America or a global enterprise, you're now being subject to more and more global regulations like SAFTI, for example. Products like E10, products like iScala, BizTrack, Tropos are now aware of these changes and again, at this conference, I would like to introduce to you something that we've just launched with ERP E10 10.1.600, and that's our global compliance engine. And I'm not going to get into the details. The uh, keynote right after me talks about this in more detail. But essentially, this allows you, allows either our people, our partners, or even customers out of cycle to go make modification to reporting to be compliant in the country that you are in. In the past, you would rely on us to take care of that for you. We call it CSFs, if you remember, country-specific functionality, in the next release of the product. We understand change is happening much sooner than that. So now we are bringing this functionality within the product, allowing you to make these changes out of cycle. Again, being global, being in the industry, is important that we understand that. And that's how, at Epicor, we are tackling this butterfly effect. Some of these butterflies are enormous like climate regulations and global trade agreements, and some of them are highly nuanced, like tax changes. Next, let's talk about experiences, which is my favorite topic, and Joe just touched on this. So while this transformation, digitization, globalization is all fine and dandy, let's admit it, it brings in a lot of complexity into our business. It's becoming harder and harder dealing with changes in technology, changes in regulation, changes in industry. And we, as a provider of software and services for you, take on that responsibility. We live in what analysts call an experiential economy, where sometimes the experiences are more important than the product. Whether you're buying a book at Amazon, you're buying a latte at Starbucks, or you're booking a room using Airbnb, the experience that is left behind is memorable to you, and we see our customers increasingly expect that same level of experience in the product, whether we are upgrading, we are implementing, we are integrating. So our ambition and vision is ease of everything. You heard Joe talk about this, and this is a challenge that we have given our teams. It's an aspiration, it's an ambition to be the most intuitive ERP solution in the world. Now, let me say this again, because I say this with great responsibility. To be, they have the aspiration and ambition to be the most intuitive to use ERP in the whole world. And the way we plan to achieve that is as follows. We have to start by being easy to deploy. Our installation, our implementation has to be simpler than it has been in the past. And thank God that our competition has set the bar so low for us that we expect to just walk over this and then do a significantly better job beyond that. And you'll see that on stage a little later today. Easy, yeah, easy to deploy also means giving you choices. Do you want it on your servers? Do you want it on our servers? Do you want it on the Amazon servers? Do you want it on the Azure servers? Easy to access. Access has, the, the metaphor of access of ERP has completely changed. Your ability to do business anywhere, anytime, on any device, on any browser, is now becoming a requirement. And several of the demonstrations you'll see on stage today are all going to be done on mobile devices for that reason. Not all of them, most of them. Easy to upgrade. This is an important initiative for us, and I know Joe touched on this. Internally, we call it Project Cirrus. And Project Cirrus, we are starting with ERP E10, and we're going to do this then with other products. 
Our challenge is to take customers on older releases, Vantage, Vista, V9, and then move you to E10.1 at a significantly reduced cost and a significantly accelerated time. And we knew that we had to change the way we automate our uh, upgrade program. As Joe mentioned, we bought this company in the UK. In fact, you'll meet one of the co-founders on stage. And what they allowed us to do is build these utilities that now makes it simple to take your data, with your permission, of course, move it into the cloud, convert it, and give it back to you. When you go to the solutions pavilion, you'll find these people uh, in lab coats. We're calling it the migration center. Do talk to them, because we want you on the latest release of our product. We are pouring millions and millions of dollars of R&D into our latest releases, and we cannot afford you to be left behind. We need to be easy to do business with, and I know this is not always the case. We took a lot of time this year in fixing internal systems. We launched Epicare. We have a single uh, pane of glass that you now look at us through. And we know there have been some bumps on the way as we implement new systems across, in fact, pretty much everything that we do. But that now allows us to be positioned to be easier to do business with. The next two are my favorite, and I'm going to spend the rest of the time here at the keynote uh, on them. Easy to use. Our products have to be easy to use. They have to be intuitive. And then easy to learn, and we'll talk a little bit about um, Epicor University. So I'll be demoing these two um, in a minute. So in the spirit of ease of everything, let's change things up. I've been, I've been speaking here, there's been a monologue going on here for a long time, and I'm sure you're going to see plenty more slides over the next two and a half days. So let's start showing you some products. And to do that, I'll call on stage a fellow Californian, SVP of product marketing, give it up for Scott Hayes. Scott? How are you doing, Morning, Scott? I got about 4,000 friends here waiting for you. 4,000 friends, I love it. All right. So let's talk about um, ERP E10. We just launched 10.1.600 last week, strong product. Yep. But of course, you're not stopping there. So talk to us a little bit about the journey going forward with 10.2. 10.2, I'm really excited. I got, to, I got to get my hands on 10.2 this week, and I took a moment to record a demo of the home page and something new I'm going to show you. So right. I'd like to show that to everyone here. What we've done with uh, Epicor 10.2 is done something really new. This is the new look of Epicor ERP. It's clean and it's bright, just like those millennials you hired to do your social networking. Well, they're bright, they're not always clean. That is true, that is true. You can see we've divided it into uh, columns and tiles that you can move around. Now, these are concepts we introduced with the, uh, E10, but we've expanded on them. And we've given you the ability uh, to, to move them around and shape them, whatever works for you. You can personalize this to what makes you more productive. And that's really cool. It's very convenient. You can move them and resize them and all that. These can show menus, forms, uh, activity streams, charts, summary data, detailed data, whatever you want. But that's that's just convenient. What we really want to get after is to make it more productive yep. and have a higher level of visibility for you. See, I don't believe there's really any such thing as business intelligence. There's really only human intelligence. And we want to enable and empower those intelligent humans with more real-time operational and contextual data. I, I agree, Scott. I think BI has moved past fancy dashboards and portals. It's now the ability for humans to extract information when they want it, where they want it. Exactly. And what we are showing here is that we've taken the simple BAQ, that Swiss Army knife that we have in the system. And with a BAQ, as you know, you can pull just about any data you want from anywhere. And we put it here in this middle column. And if you want to get into the details and look at the list, that's great. But we've also got these key metric tiles that are pulled from the same data as that BAQ. And these key metric tiles are where you can really focus in on situational awareness. So what we can see here about our shipments and our orders is that we've shipped 185 shipments already, but we've only taken four orders. Seems like a bad day. But wait a minute. It's 7 a.m. in California, and that's where we process our orders. They're just getting started. But we ship our orders from here in Nashville. They've been working for two hours, and they've shipped out 185 orders. Now let's scroll on over to the right to this new thing called Epicor 
data discovery. Now these tiles are active and animated. You can see them kind of scrolling through the metrics that are in each chart, capturing each point, each bar, each column on a chart, and showing you the number and the label that goes with that. So you can just kind of watch that for a little while and see what's happening, almost like a ticker. Or you can go and grab any tile, expand it out, and see more of the detail that's below it. You see something interesting on that ticker? Let's go dig in a little bit. So this one that's showing my, a little bit of my receiving history, I can see that for a couple of months, we were receiving a lot of stuff early on. That can kind of disrupt what we're doing in the warehouse. And then we had a month where just everything was late. That's not good either. And then four months of exactly 100% on time receiving. I could see that from that detail. And I can do that with any one of these tiles in Epicor Data Discovery. The next thing I want to show you is how to create one of these views with Epicor Data Discovery. So I'm opening up a new panel here, and I'm going to open up a fresh new view. And I can pick data either from all those BAQs or from the data warehouse. In this case, I picked the data warehouse and inventory on hand. That gives me a nice palette to work with. And you kind of expect, OK, well, I'm going to do the usual uh, bar chart, line chart, pie chart, et cetera. But that's, I'm going to click on this That's so pin. yesterday now. That is so yesterday. I'm going to do this map, not a map of the country, a map of our warehouse, all right? And on that map, I'm going to highlight on hand quantity. I'm going to go and grab the bin number and move that up to location, all right? And then I'm going to need date. So I'm going to grab date and I'm going to move it to this area called Animate. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. Now, I only want to look at one month worth of data at this point. So I'm going to go down and grab month name. I'm going to drag it all the way over here to the right, drop it in there, so that's and pick a January. Visual view of your warehouse that's right That's my now. warehouse, right? The darker the blue, the more inventory quantity I have in that bin at that time. Now it's going to start to animate and show me day after day What's happening on the floor of that warehouse? Where is that inventory going high? Where is that inventory going low? I can watch it animate, or I can go up and grab that time marker and drag it to the right. This is like time-lapse photography. I can see what's happening on that floor for the entire month of January as I drag that off to the right. We learned something kind of fun while we were doing this, while I was doing this recording. We're going to go back to the beginning of the month. And watch these three packing lines in the middle of the warehouse. In the first few days, we're using all three packing lines, right? But after day five, they go dead. I'm down to one. Yeah. Put and a I lunch scroll through, there. and I see I don't use those packing lines for the rest of the month. Maybe there's something I can do differently with that space in the warehouse, reconfigure a few things, and make my business more efficient. So these are some of the exciting things we're going to be able to do with Epicor Data Discovery. A few more clicks, you can take that tile and put it here on your home page so that you know more and do more every minute you're working with Epicor ERP. In fact, right after this session, you and Leanne are going to be showing more of this in Absolutely. the ERP Absolutely. We'll road dig ahead. into this just a little bit deeper. And you can go down to the Solution uh, Pavilion and uh, take a look at what's coming out in Epicor. 10 to. Great. So let's summarize, Scott. What Scott showed you is, again, reimagining the user interface. Not, again, just pretty screens and pictures, but the interaction, that experience. And then EDD, I think, is just a phenomenal innovation from the team. So Epicor Data Discovery, stop by and ask us. It'll be coming to you 10.2 sometime later this year. Fun times, man. Absolutely. Great. Round of applause to Scott. Scott, Thank thanks you. a lot. Goodbye. Good job. All right, so from Epicor E10, let's move to another exciting product, Profit21. And I'm going to show you something live on stage now, an actual live demo of, again, a reimagined Profit21 that is shipping now. And to do this, I would like to call on stage Mr. Profit21 himself, give it up for the VP of development, person that many of you have known for several years, Dave Getty. Dave. How are you doing, Dave? Very well. Excited yes. to be here. So are you nervous pacing back there? Are you good? Are you ready for this? I am good. Very uh, excited to be here and to talk to you about innovation. All uh, right. In innovation that uh, I think we're all very passionate about here at Epicor. Great. 
So you're going to show us, you're going to give us a demo? I am. Already. So while Dave um, sets up, um, let me tell you a quick story. So about a year and a half or two years ago, we went to Dave and his uh, distribution team, his Profit21 team, and gave them a challenge. We said, take the same powerful functionality of Profit21, and without losing a single feature in that product, because we can't afford to do that, re-architect not just the UI, but the core product, and reimagine the future of Profit21. So you ready? So tell us a little bit, Dave, about this web journey. Sure. This is about taking years and years of distribution-centric functionality and bringing it to the work surface of your choice. Now, I think for most people, that work surface is going to be a browser, um, whether that be Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Chrome. Um, and if I was on my Mac, I'd probably be using Safari. But let's talk for a moment about a power user, the kind of person that needs 10, 15 Profit 21 windows open to do their job properly. Think about what that might start to look like on the browser. Uh, so if you look at my screen here, you see in Chrome, I have three Profit 21 windows. I have my newspaper, my email, another Profit 21 window, and a vendor website. So you can see that this work surface is starting to become cumbersome. So for this user, we're delivering an app. And it works really the same way as the browser application, but it's native to, to Windows. So you can use like, the taskbar to organize the windows. You can use Alt-Tab to, to uh, move in between them. So, and, and also, if I, was on, if I prefer a Mac to a PC, we've also delivered a native Mac application. So it's kind of the same idea. Boot it up out of your dock. You get the normal Mac menus, and you can organize and control the windows utilizing native Mac controls. And last but certainly not least is mobile. So I can take my tablet, if I want to take Profit 21 on the go, fire up Safari, and I'm off to the races. Great. But this is more than just the UI. I mean, what we did as a result of this is also changed up the architecture and the platform. Tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. We've used technology to simplify the user experience and provide more capabilities to help make our customers successful. So I'd like to show you a quick example of that. So one of my many responsibilities is to expedite late back orders. That might involve contacting somebody in my warehouse. I might need to get on the phone and call a supplier. So it's first thing in the morning. I'm logged in. And do I have any work to do? Well, I don't know yet, because what I need to do is I need to go to my order portal and see. And it looks like, oh, yeah, I have 15 of these things to do. So I need to go to my work. So let's turn this around and make this a more efficient process. So from the home portal, this way you know that it's real, it's live. There's yeah. no sleight of hands here. I'm braver than smart. <laughs> All right, so um, from my home portal, I can go and create a new, I'm going to create a new tile widget. And what I want this thing to do is show me my list of back orders. So I'm just going to give it a name. Um, we'll call it back orders. And I am going to pull it from my order entry portal. And I want the totals column. So I save that. So now I can see right from my home screen, I have 15 of these things. And then I can drill on it, and it'll take me to the back orders that are in trouble. So now I can start working. So now, rather than me going to my work, my work is coming around to me. Excellent. So let's talk about my favorite topic. With this new platform, how does it help Profit21 propel its way into the cloud? Sure. So Profit21 version 2017, it's a cloud-friendly web architecture that lowers your total cost of ownership. We want our customers to have a choice between an on-premise deployment and a, flex, and a scalable cloud deployment. Whoa, 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 whoa. Profit 21, 2017. Now, what are you slipping in here? What is that? Yeah, yeah, what happened to 12.19? Yeah, so Profit 21 has been, been reborn. So we're retiring the 12 series, and we're rolling out the 2017 desktop client that you're all used to, but also the brand new 2017 web client. All right. Profit 21 reimagined, rebranded, ready for the future. That is exciting. Well, let's talk about extensibility, because obviously we want a vibrant ecosystem that will be able to take this product and then move it ahead. Yeah, so we've built a full API over Profit21, and that's going to offer a much more expansive set of web services uh, that exist today. 
That'll give our customers and our partners a lot more options to integrate other applications to Profit 21. There you go. Feel free to applaud, folks, anytime. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about the upgrade experience. As, I, as I've said earlier, sometimes the challenge we create is we talk about this new, beautiful, newly reimagined product here. Customers are still using the powerful functionality of, in, in many cases, 12.18. So what is that experience going to be moving to 2017? Yeah, so we spent a lot of time and energy making this a smooth process for our customers. While we've innovated and added new capabilities, we've left the core workflows and the core layouts the same. So that means you can move to the web at your pace. So whether you want to just want to bring a few users over and have them do quotes on a tablet, or whether you want to bring over your whole organization, you can do this without incurring the time and expense of retraining your employees. Great. So what's the feedback from customers been so far? So our beta customers are giving us a lot of great feedback. I think they're very excited about the potential of the 2017 web client. But how about we go ahead and ask one? Yeah, why don't we move to the audience, to our charming Rebecca Selby, who has a customer who's going to tell us about this. Hi, I'm here with Bob Bingham, IT manager at Eastern Industrial Automation. Now, Bob, I understand your company's been using Epicor solutions for 30 years, and that you yourself have been using Epicor for even longer than that. You've had a chance to get your hands into the new Profit 21 system, so tell us what you're seeing. Well, we've been doing beta for the last few months on the product, uh, the web version, and uh, so far, looking at it, the look and feel is a lot like the P21 normal application, so I feel it's gonna be an easy transition for the employees to use the, the web application. That's great to hear, and how do you think this is gonna help you achieve your business goals moving forward? I think one of the big benefits is the portability of the, of the new web application, being able to use it on multiple devices, uh, applications, and uh, from home for different browsers. That's really going to give us a lot more access to our business systems. That's great. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Thanks much. a lot, Barbara. Thank you, Rebecca. So, Dave, again, with this new platform, we announced recently the launch of Epicor Data Analytics and the integration with P21. So let's talk a little bit about Epicor Data Analytics, or EDA as it's called. Sure. Epicor Data Analytics is a cloud-based data platform that makes it really easy for you to visualize and analyze data to keep you ahead of your competition. It's simple to use. Uh, your business users can get the information they need without involving your IT team. And I, I think it does a really good job of getting past what happened in your business and starting to probe into why. W why did my sales suddenly surge? Why am I margin shrinking? So as our analysts will tell us, you, you can't seem to go to a conference these days without somebody talking about a portal or a dashboard. What makes EDA different? Why does it go beyond just portals and dashboards? Yeah, there's two uh, major ways. And I would say one is its ability to aggregate disparate data sources. So obviously, you can pull in your ERP data, but it can get data from your CRM system. It can get it from a human resources system or an Excel spreadsheet, just to name a few. Also, it takes that transactional data, the stuff that you see in dashboards and portal, it aggregates it up to a higher level so that you can see trends and analyze performance month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year. So if you take a look at the screen, you see um, what, it, what it looks like, what a dashboard looks like. This is my sales picture right here. Very easily understood metrics. I can see my rolling. 12-month comparison of sales, and if I wanted to learn more about that, um, what's driving the recent surge in sales, I can drill in and see all the customers and see who's really impacting it. Once I've identified the movers and the shakers, drill again in the product, and I can see what they're buying more of. With Epicor Data Analytics, you can drill into any area of your application. So here's an important point. Most of what you see here is historic information. So the way Epicor Data Analytics works, it takes all your data, puts it up in the cloud in a data cube, and you can go slice and dice, print reports, visualize, optimize using it. But at the end of the day, it's still working on historic information. What we are going to, part of our roadmap looking forward is predictive analytics, the ability to have this tool predict events in your business that haven't even occurred. Can you, can you talk a little bit about predictive analytics on our roadmap? Sure. Predictive analytics is something that we'd really like to add to the application and is on our roadmap. So I'll just give you an example. No matter what business you're in, whether you're a distributor or a manufacturer, you probably worry about customer attrition. 
So what if Epicor Data Analytics could extract a list of all the customers who have ever left you and the reason why they left you and feed that into a machine learning tool and break that data down into patterns and build a model, a model that could be applied against your current customers and give each of them a risk score so you'd understand who's at risk for attrition. So I think it would look something like this. Um, we have uh, up top here, you see that I have six customers at risk for attrition, and I can drill down into that. And now I can see the customers who are actually at, um, at risk, and I see their associated scores. Now I can drill into that, and now I see a dashboard that shows me all the reasons driving that risk factor. I can see that they've stopped responding to outreach from my, our customer service department. I can see that they've bought less units than they did last year. And now that I understand what's driving the risk, I can put together a plan to help save that customer relationship. Excellent. And where can people learn more about the new Profit 21, Epicor Data Analytics, and all the exciting stuff you're doing? Yeah, so there's quite a few opportunities here at Insights. Uh, between classes and labs, there's eight of them, so I encourage you to check out your conference agendas. And also, there's a lot of people uh, teed up in the Solutions Pavilion that'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Great. Exciting times, Dave. Thank you for your time. Good luck, and thanks for being here. Thank Round you. of applause for Dave, <laughs> folks. Thank you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, analytics. I mean, sometimes ERP vendors have been a bit notorious in the past to have a very application-centric view of the world and not being focused on data as much. In fact, sometimes we, almost, we call the data a database. That is changing at Epicor. We are turning things inside out. We see data as that new oil, that new currency, that new intelligence, those new insights that we're looking at bringing to you. So you'll see plenty of examples. In both Epicor ERP E10, the demo that um, Scott did on Epicor Data Discovery, uh, and what Dave showed you on Epicor Data Analytics, you saw a very clever use of analytics just embedded in the system with an easy experience integrated right into product. So with that now, let's move to the next topic, and that is learning. So it is important for us, and before we go there, I just want to make a point that the UX refresh that you're seeing isn't just limited to the products you saw on stage. We are reimagining all our go-forward products, all our leading products that we have in our portfolio. Products like Profit21, iScala just came out with iScala 3.1. iScala, for those of you who don't know, is an ERP product that is sold worldwide, a very strong footprint in the Nordics. And with 3.1, we've completely reimagined the UI for iScala. We've done the same with Eclipse. I showed you Eclipse Mobile Showroom, some of the new UI that came out in an earlier release. HCM, our HR product, as well as a recent exciting acquisition that we've made of a company called Docstar. So Docstar is workflow and document management in a way that is done very differently, very intuitively than some of the products that you might have used before. And then Epicor's Commerce Connect, our foray into e-commerce, and again, a lot of work and a lot of investments going into these products. So this experience shouldn't be limited just to products. It's also how you consume these products, how you learn these products. And to show you something really exciting and something really compelling and different, from Epicor University, I would like to welcome on stage Monica Green. Round of applause for Monica, please. How are you, Monica? I'm great, Himanshu. How are you? Very good. good. So tell us what's going on these days with Epicor University. That's exciting. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm really excited to talk to you about what we're doing with Epicor University. Um, this morning, you've been talking about Himanshu, or you've been listening to Himanshu speak on topics that are really important to you and your growth. And while every single one of those topics has its own level of importance, the one that resonates most with us in Epicor University is experience. So we want to make sure that we can improve your experience, whether that's an implementation, a migration, an upgrade, or just running your day-to-day -day business. It's up to us to make sure that your learning experience is easy and fun. So I could stand up here all morning, and I could tell you all of the great things that we're doing. I could tell you how training on demand and knowledge on demand can help you learn your Epicor product. 
I could tell you how augmented reality and gamification can improve your learning experience, but talking only gets me so far, so I'd rather show you. Absolutely. As they say, a demo is worth a thousand slides. So what are you going to show us, Monica? All right. So let's start with training on demand. And just a little bit ago, you heard Himanshu talk about ease of upgrades with Project Cirrus. Well, training on demand plays an important role in that upgrade process, as well as implementations, migrations, or even onboarding new employees. The purpose of training on demand is to get you the information that you need to understand your Epicor product and be functional in your business. We know that your time is valuable, so we keep these modules short and simple, somewhere between six and 10 minutes. You can expect to see animations so that you can build relationships. You'll see conceptual illustrations to help you understand the big picture, as well as in, um, interactive engagement to help reinforce knowledge. Um, so the idea is basically to get you the information. It all resides on our Epicor Learning Center, which is the LMS. So you can test comprehension and track progress as you move through your training programs. So Monica, I believe these six to 10 minute videos or vignettes are important when I want to learn something new. There, there's right. a new screen, there's a new feature. I don't have time to go for a whole session, so I can quickly go and learn that. Yep. But what about the time when I'm at a certain point and I'm stuck and I need an answer right then and I don't even want to spend those six, 10 minutes exploring everything? What are we doing to get that answer, that knowledge right away? Yeah, that's a great question. So we want to be able to get you guys the information that you need quickly and easily. So we're creating knowledge on demand. These are one to two minute video snippets that get you that one specific information, piece of information that you need right now to get your job done and then get you back to business. And we are designing a way to host this content that's modern and easy to use. It has the familiar look of YouTube you're going to have the ability to search for information. You'll be able to see related videos. Um, you'll be able to share information with colleagues using our social sharing tool. So the idea is that we want to provide this information to you in product, in Epicare, or by accessing this site directly. Because again, it's about getting you the information that you need, when you need it, and how you want it. Great. So we turned the volume down, but these are audio instructive sessions right within the product. I'm stuck on a field. I can play this for 30 seconds, find out how it's done, and then move on. Yes, absolutely. OK. That's very cool. Is that it? No, not even close. There's more? Not okay. even close. He's just warming up, folks. <laughs> so now we have millennials, right? And the workforce habits of millennials has changed. So we are addressing that. So Himanshu, have you heard about gamification? Gamification. So gamification is an interesting new learning metaphor. And research shows that the total recall that you have of something that you learned when it's in an interactive game with some rewards is significantly higher than a static session. Right. But what's that got to do with anything here? All right. So are you guys ready to get to the really fun stuff? Let's check this out. All right. Gamification doesn't work in every situation, and it isn't for everybody. But there are several instances where gamification can really increase learner engagement and improve in experience. And so we are addressing that. We are, you're going to begin seeing gamification concepts or micro games in our training on demand modules. Maybe you'll see a memory game or a maze where a series of questions walks you through completing that maze. You might see a standalone game like, uh, that walks you through an entire process like Quote to Cash being illustrated here. And you're also going to begin seeing um, gamification in our live training as well. Excellent. And these will be on mobile devices. So you could be waiting at an airport. I mean, Kathy, I can just see you waiting for a flight and playing the Quote to Cash game, for example. All right, so what else do we have? OK, one more thing. So let's talk about augmented reality. OK, augmented reality. So can I tell them a little bit about it? If you could, please. All right. So virtual reality was the concept where you took computer-generated input, or CGI as it's called, and virtually embedded that in the products. Augmented reality takes virtual reality and overlays it on uh, actual life objects. So it's a more immersive 
uh, learning metaphor than just virtual reality. Absolutely. But again, what's that got to do with anything over here? All right, so there are many ways that we can incorporate augmented reality into your learning experience, and I just want to show you a few. Okay. So Himanshu, if you don't mind using this phone, um, you're going to see up on the screen the engineering workbench, and you're going to notice a little code in the bottom left-hand corner. I would using the Zapper app that you've gone ahead and installed on that phone. If you don't mind, zap that little code on the screen. So what you see on the screen uh, is a screen with a little code on the bottom right. We call that a Zapper code. So imagine you have this, and all of a sudden you have a question on how this product works. This is where I literally go on the edge here to, wait a minute, they moved the screen on me. OK, to scan this, you should be seeing my screen. And if I'm doing this right, it's going to unlock it and start playing a video. But as you notice, they quickly changed out my phone. So let's do <laughs> this again. I promise Celia I won't fall off. So all right, let's do this one more time. OK, it says locked. Nope, oh, doesn't want to do that, Monica. Well, don't fall. That would be funny if I fell. <laughs> that would break the net. All right, so um, the point is when you do this, in fact, here I have a backup in case the one thing in keynotes always have a plan B. Let's try <laughs> this with a screenshot. Let's try this. That's what they get for switching out the phone. Yeah, I did that. This is the reality of technology, right? And device number two. <laughs> there we go. So you're going to see a menu appear on screen. And go ahead and click Create a new ECO group. To create an ECO group, click New on the standard toolbar. And it's going to look in like it's actually field, doing it in the, the product if your identify. phone is held right up to the screen. But notice now, that Himanshu can move his phone back and forth, and the video goes the with you. Group. Yeah, look at but again, if you were at your, at your PC at your screen and snapped your phone back, it would look like it's actually group. happening in inside your product. So it's just another way of getting you the information that you need, when you need it, how you want it. Excellent. What do you have? You're like a magician. You keep showing <laughs> yes, up with stuff. Yes, yes, yes. So let's now imagine that you're um, in need of a new piece of equipment. We've just shipped it to you, like this ISC 250 credit card reader we have here. And you need to learn how to install this piece of equipment. So Himanshu, if you don't mind, go ahead and scan that. All right, that. Ingenico device, so you receive this from us, and you're not quite sure how it works. You have a zapper code on it. This indicates. Thank you, Ray Vang. <laughs> So now with augmented reality, we have the ability to send you the information the that you need. This procedure will set up the IS250 to display your logo for the idle and transaction screens. To learn more about that piece of equipment and get it installed in your business. Excellent. Wonderful. Are we done now? <laughs> um, I think we're done. There's just one other thing that I'd like to talk about. Okay. Um, you know, when Himanshu talks about ease of use, I want you guys to know that that's at the forefront of our minds with Epicor University, so much so that we are hosting a product and, use, uh, product and learning usability lab here at Insights. I encourage you guys to all come visit us. It's your feedback that's going to let us know what we're doing right and where we can improve. Um, if you do participate, you're going to be entered into a drawing to win an iPad mini. And we're going to take that information home with us and use it as we strategize on what's next in Epicor University. Excellent. Thank you, Monica. Here, I'll Thank send you, this Himanshu. with you. Round of applause. Thank, Thank you, Monica. You. Great job. Thanks well so done. Much. So again, an example. And the reason I really wanted to do this live is to show to you that we are serious about this stuff, that reimagining is not easy, transformation is not easy, but it is change, and we have to accept and adopt change and move at the pace of technology. So we realize that we cannot be experts in everything. We realize oftentimes we have to rely on a, a network of valuable partners or third parties to complete that last mile functionality. So you see here on screen examples of our vibrant ecosystem that we worked well with, and we need to continue to do a better job at opening up our, uh, opening up our products, opening up integration 
to uh, be able to achieve that same level of experience with our partners that you'll see with our own products. In fact, it starts with a services-oriented architecture. I'm not going to get into all details. I know we're running a little bit ahead of time here. But public APIs, you, we had public APIs in Epicor ERP E10. We'll have public APIs in Profit21, starting with the 2017 release. They're worrying about synchronization, orchestration, and all of that. And again, the newly imagined program that we will bring to you for our ISPs, and please stop by the Solutions Pavilion where you'll see many of them, is again to make it easy for you to integrate with us. All right, so we have 15 minutes left, so I'm not quite done yet. And before we close, let's have a little more fun. Let's now peer into the future, and I would like to introduce to you Epicor Labs. Epicor Labs is an initiative that has started about a year ago. It's an opportunity for several of our colleagues from around the world to participate. We had these hackathons. We had one in India. We had one in the US. We had one in Moscow. And the ability for them to take some time, take some unstructured time, and start innovating um, within Epicor. Uh, we focused on several areas. Project Cirrus that you saw, the upgrade, was a result of work being done at Epicor Labs. And what I'm going to show you on stage is something in the world of IoT, the Internet of Things. So many of you are familiar with it. Really quick, if I was to give a summary, IoT is the ability to connect, to collect, to visualize, to analyze, and optimize information in real time from smart machines. Several of our customers are using this today. I had the opportunity to visit many of them. Companies like Sistema, companies like Temperzone showed me their entire manufacturing plants that were working with these sensors, with our products like MatTech. So we are taking that and we are ex extending that. And to show this, I would like to call on stage. Now, this is a IoT demo done live in front of all of you here, all the way from Birmingham, United Kingdom. Give it up for Stephen Edgington. Stephen? How are you doing, Stephen? Good, good. Very well. Are you over jet lag? Stephen just got in last night, much to my chagrin because he missed the rehearsal. But anyway, it's all going to be great. So yep. IoT, tell me a little bit about it. What, what should we expect with IoT? OK, so instead of telling you, I'm going to show you. And uh, I've got a device here with me. And uh, this is the Photon. It's an open source development board from a company called Particle IO. And you can embed this in your products in your factory, in your, in your supply chain, to give those things a nervous system, to allow them to feel, see, and hear their environment, and then push that data into the cloud, and then make intelligent decisions on it. So let me show you how we can make this work with ERP. All right, well, let's take a look. So what uh, Stephen showed you was a device, in this case, a photon, that's a sensor that we placed on machines, and its ability to communicate directly with the ERP. So the technology that Stephen's going to be showing as he gets set up is the ability to take data from a sensor, and we're going to show this real time, and you're going to see it, move it up to the cloud, and then sync it and connect it to an ERP, and then be able to go the other way and make changes to the system. All right. Okay. How, mu how much does this cost you? That, that looks expensive. Are you blowing my budget with that? So. It's, it's actually tw about $20. If, if we can move to the camera on screen, please. There you go. OK. Yeah. So it's actually about $20. 20 pounds. That's what these days, like four bucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. <laughs> so this, this is the Wi-Fi module. Um, that's about $19. But there's also a cellular version um, that's about $60. And the thing is, these devices now are available off the shelf. They're commodity. You know, there's no more designing these yourself. So out of the box, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's, just, it's got an identity, but it's, it hasn't got any purpose. It, it's not used for anything. So the first thing I want to do is actually load some software onto it and push that onto it to give it, give it its purpose. And so how can I do that? You're burning or flashing the device now. Exactly. So I'm going to plug it into my laptop, put it into a mode that lets me flash it. Flash orange. All right. And then I'm going to pull up Epicor ERP. 
And from within ERP, I want to flash and associate this device. So you know, this is actually showing how you would do this on the shop floor. And this is just an example for this particular type of board. But you'll see it's flashing now. It's gone green. It's now flashing, and it'll start to breathe. And, and, and now it's alive. It's connected to the cloud. Great. All right, but you're, you're connected to the laptop. That's not simulating a real-world environment, because this is going to be on a machine in a factory somewhere. OK, yeah, so, so I'll do this instead. I'm just impressed you made it through TSA with that. Yeah, so it was close, but I didn't, I didn't tell them. So, so now we've basically got, in here is four AA batteries. I'll turn that on. It's going to connect automatically, and it's going to flash now, and then it's going to pulse, which indicates it's now collected to the cloud. And it's actually connected to Azure IoT Hub, um, which is just one cloud provider. But we don't really you know, care which cloud provider. We want to be able to take those messages and process them into ERP. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is, in Epicor ERP, I want to go to our device maintenance. And what I can do is refresh this. And it now shows this device is online. Yep, and this is in effect what we call the device twin. This is its virtual representation inside ERP. So I can see things of its properties, um, you know, where it's located in the world, when it was last updated, etc. But what I'm going to do is this isn't that interesting. What I've actually done is the software I've put onto that device is to simulate an engine generator, you know, something that provides backup power. Uh, you know, that uh, when your power goes out. So what I'm going to do is pull up a visualization of that. It's easier than bringing one on stage. Yeah, or getting it through TSA. <laughs> so this now, one second. Good moment. There you go. So this is our device simulator. And what I want to do is I want to mirror this device and then turn on and show the sensors. So this is where the sensor would have been placed on this device. Yep. So what I've got here is if I hover over the sensors, I've got a fuel sensor that shows me fuel level. I've got a temperature sensor. And I've got a power sensor. And all these are coming from this device. And I'll prove that, because when I press Start here, you'll notice a light here. It's not very good light, but you'll notice a light comes on. So I'll press Start. And what will happen now is the light comes onto the device, just here, to indicate it's running. The temperature's increasing. The fuel level's decreasing. And this is all coming from this edge device, this IoT device that's out in the field that's been attached to your product. And when the fuel goes below a certain level, that's where we'll hit a threshold. And this threshold. You know, the light on the device now is flashing red. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. So the light went from green to red when fuel hit a threshold, which meant you need more fuel. Yep. And so what then will happen is this will send a message into the cloud. It will be processed and pushed into the ERP system and then trigger a BPM action that can do anything I want. And there's my email message, which has actually sent an email to our suppliers. Yeah, because we don't want to do this work. This is a device out in the field, we've got a global supply company, and we've automatically created a service call, a service job, a subcontract purchase order, and pushed that out automatically to our supplier. And we've done that with the brilliant BPM framework that's inside of Epicor ERP. So here you can see I've got a new entity called an IoT device, I've got an action called on event, and then I can use our visual design framework in the BPM engine to be able to say, if this event is a refuel, and they've got an active contract with us, yeah, we're selling this service now, um, go and raise a call, raise a job, raise a purchase order, and notify uh, the supplier. And given you're using standard BPMs, the, the possibilities then become limitless. Anywhere you can write a BPM method, you're able to achieve this. Exactly. So what we've done is the IoT devices can be associated with anything in ERP a serial number, an employee, um, you know, a, a bin location. And then you can make those trigger actions that can do uh, anything you want with your BPM. You know, it's limited by your uh, imagination. 
But the future's more than just this convenience, this kind of sensory response, you know, it goes below a level, I want to hit an action. You know, the future's more intelligent systems. And what you can do, taking this further, is taking all this sensory data, taking all this telemetry, feed it into machine learning models, you know, neural networks, and in effect, start looking at predictive maintenance. And so you start saying to your customers the way of doing preventative maintenance schedules or looking for anomalies in sensor data, and then triggering that action into ERP. And that's where we play. You know, in Epicor, we're providing that business transaction layer. You know, we're not doing the IoT devices. We'll work with the devices that we've got. We're not doing the IoT hub part. We're doing the, the business application. That's fantastic, Stephen. So I'm sure a lot of customers want to learn more. Uh, we have plenty of sessions. I know Microsoft is here. They're partnering a session on IoT. You're doing some sessions, Stephen. Where, where, they can, where can they go find you? I suspect people are going to be throwing their hotel keys at you today. Yeah, so we've got a session on Thursday where we're going to do an hour deep dive into how all this works, how to flash these devices over the air, how we built the whole uh, elements, the BPMs and the visualization. So come along and ask questions. All right, great work, Stephen. Some brilliant engineering going on from Stephen, his team, and many others at Epicor. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. a lot. Great job. All right, so let's, let's summarize what we talked about. So we discussed that your growth is our passion. We achieve it by focusing on your industry. We understand the cloud. We understand cloud is soon becoming a de facto standard. And we are proud of our cloud and our service offerings. We are a global company with local presence across several countries and an expanding geographical footprint. Our ambition and aspiration, as we said, is going to be creating these memorable experiences through our products and the services that we provide. For that, we will leverage analytics and data. Data is going to be central to our transformation going forward. We're going to leverage a very vibrant ecosystem to achieve that. And the spirit of innovation at Epicor is going to make sure we are moving at the pace of technology and taking you all with us. So with that, I would like to conclude this morning session. You've got great sessions planned for you. We've got great sessions planned for you throughout the day and the next couple days. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being our customers and partners. Good luck and enjoy the conference. Thank you.